When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374-0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! Just six days to go until Rangers against Celtic. Eight games to go, Celtic top of the table, 74 points. Nine games to go, Rangers, one point behind. High noon, Ibrox on Sunday. Barry Ferguson, you can't wait. It's going to be some weekend. No change this weekend after Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I fully expected that, Paul. Um, obviously, Rangers getting a good win against the Burning and, and Saturday. And obviously, Celtic going to Livingston yesterday and, and won pretty convincingly. So, yep, it's all eyes on next Sunday at, at 12 o'clock. Looking forward to it. And I think it'll be both teams I'll, I'll, I'll certainly go for the win. Barry looking well, I'm feeling good and so too is our other guest, he's a championship winner, he's won the first division, Stephen McGinn, Stephen congratulations. Thanks Paul, Um, been a really good couple of days um, in the aftermath of winning it, you know, strange feeling probably winning the game just before we Mm -hmm. started but um, just the shackles seemed to come off and uh, amazing performance, beat Montrose 7-1 and uh, the boys performed well over the next couple of days as well. Barry I know you want to congratulate Stephen? Yeah, l- yeah, listen, it's the, the, the form yeah. that they've been on. I know he's missed a, a fair chunk of this yeah. season through injury, but he's found his, himself back playing um, a few games and coming off the, the, the bench. And listen, they're the best days, Paul, when you win mm. league titles. You work so hard, that's why you work so hard in pre season. Uh, and then when it finally happens, it's all about celebrating. And you can tell that the young man across me has yeah. certainly <laughs> celebrated the last couple of days. But You've got to do it, Paul. I was always big on it. Um, sometimes some people say I get carried away too much, but listen, that's why you play football, to win trophies and certainly win championships. And, and folk are thoroughly deserved that this year. And the manager enjoyed it as well. We saw him on TikTok uh, dancing away, John McGlynn. Yeah, uh, he's obviously he's football daft. Yeah. He, he he wants to win pre-season friendlies, yeah. goes into so much detail every game. And it was nice to see him. He uh, puts himself under a lot of pressure and... He, going in there taking that job uh, for us signing up but for him especially I mean there is only one remit you have to get Falkirk out of that league um, just touching on what Barry mm-hmm. said there about winning the league yeah. one of the boys actually in the bus back from Montrose you know you're having a drink and you're just reflecting he said you know everyone probably thinks it's been dead easy he said how hard has this season been he said see the amount of times it's like teams go ah you've you, cruised that that's yeah. been easy he said there's no been many easy games and that's a, a going unbeaten um, 31, so, is that 31 games? 31 and then uh, and so we talk about I mean sometimes in Celtic or Romper League Rangers or Romper League and you say oh, they're, dead, then he's, they're not they're definitely not Barry you're nodding because it yeah, does no it's the hardest thing yeah. to do Paul and, and certainly in terms of Falkirk and League One the, all the pressure was on them because if you look yeah. at Falkirk I remember Falkirk being a Premier League team yeah. but when you look at them just now for me in my eyes they should be uh, challenging for the Championship to try to get back into the, the Premier League so all the pressure was on them and I think they've handled it brilliantly they've been the most consistent um, and as I said it's all about going and, and enjoying it and certainly they have over the last couple of days It's going to be about who's going to win the Championship Dundee United getting the honours at the weekend Barry we're coming to the Premiership obviously in a second and we're going to take calls 08, 08 17, 17, 700 that's a big win though isn't it for Jim Goodwin and uh his team yeah it was a huge win he's been under a fair bit of pressure um, so listen that, that was one he would have been desperate to get um, but I still think it's going to go right down to the wire that, that championship it's a tough tough league um, but it was a brilliant three points for Dundee United Stephen yeah it was a must win for Dundee United and I thought I mean we obviously travelling in the bus so yeah. you're following the teams as they come in and no Holt and no um, Gallagher for Dundee United first first choice centre, uh, centre halves against a team that's um, free scoring so I thought they might struggle but a huge win and I, and I think it was more of a must win for them Rafe have to do their business with the game in hand and uh, yeah I think it'll go right into the wire too So it kicked off on Saturday 3 o'clock Rangers winning 3-1 against Hibs Celtic playing 12 o'clock yesterday 3-0 at Livingston Let's hear from Philippe Clement speaking after the big win over Hibs Yeah it's very satisfying 
to see the way we played because Hibs have a, have a good team. They were in a, in a good run also in the league after they made good transfers in the, in the January window. And we played a dominant game. We were in control of all the game. It's a pity to get a goal against in the only shot on target that we get against today. But the reaction was again very good and that's been our strength. So a lot of positive things today for me. Uh, the way we played football, the way we created chances, the, uh, the way we scored the three goals or four. We were unlucky that apparently uh, the boots of Scott are a little bit too big. I'm also really happy that we, yeah, okay, before the game, you need to make the puzzle with players coming back, with who do you start, who do you want to come in um, to get minutes, to get rhythm, and all scenario fitted today. That's also not always the case. Everybody came in also in a good way, giving the right energy to the team and doing the right things. So it's also an important for us that we have already for months that everybody knows what to do in his position or even in another position. Uh, like Dujon, Dujon played the first time left fullback today with me. Um, and to do the right things for the team. And you see this solidarity, this hunger and this desire to do the right things. And then with good performances, the, the results come. Barry, what did you make of the game? Yeah, I, I thought Rangers were, were pretty dominant. Um, and as you just mentioned there, uh, Hibs only attempt on, on goal. They, they score, which is disappointing, but it's how you respond to that, how you react to that. And, and certainly they reacted in the right manner. Because if you go in at one each, I think then that gives Hibs a fair bit of confidence. But Rangers obviously managed to get that vital goal to go 2-1 up into half-time. A, a brilliant cross by Cantwell and a, a great header by Dessers and then that kind of settles the nerves down a wee bit and they come out and they were they were dominant it's just a matter of when or how many they were, were going to score but they ran out convincing winners in my eyes and what about the captain James Tavernier then I didn't realise it until he'd scored the goal yep. he's now the the most goals of a defender in Britain ever yeah well he, he, com, he comes up in conversation quite a yeah. bit I think he's always come under um, a fair bit of unfair criticism I think he's been an excellent signing I think he's grew into the role as captain he, he's became a, a real leader look he's not a rant or a raver but what he does in terms of the, the amount of goals Paul and assists that he's given um, Rangers over the years has been phenomenal and uh, again he popped up with another vital goal at the weekend Didn't the Rangers fans now realise how invaluable he's been for Rangers in recent years? Yeah the, listen defensively you could say that he could yeah. be stronger but the big part of, a big part sorry of James Tavernier's game is is obviously going forward and when he goes forward I think he's one of the best attacking fullbacks about there's no doubt about it and I think if you look at the bigger picture and overall and for what Rangers spent on him £300,000 I think he's been a fantastic signing You'll have to be informed this coming weekend up against the likes of the speed of Maeda it's yep. going to be some game isn't it? Yep they, yeah. they two always have a good battle yep. obviously Tav, Tavernier likes to go forward um, Maeda likes to go forward mm. Good pace, so that will be one of the, the clashes um, that I, I'm sure people will be looking forward to at the weekend. Stephen, what about the captain of Rangers? That's a phenomenal record. I didn't realise it was Graham Alexander who held it until yesterday. Yeah, um, former manager, obviously of Motherwell yeah. up here. I remember playing against his Burnley team and um, took all the penalties, free kicks. Um, yeah, Tavernier. Some, I mean, sometimes the criticism becomes because he's. He's not the Rangers captain that Barry was. Or, and at times he's overseen Celtic maybe winning yeah. cups and leagues and stuff like that. And it, it comes with the territory. But I think what Barry said, if he could defend as well as he attacks, he'd be in the English Premier League, no doubt. I think, And that's no disrespect. I, th I think that's why Rangers have been able to keep him for so long. Because going forward, he's as good as anyone. as a top goal-scoring defender. And his finish on Saturday is brilliant. Yeah. The, the volley. It's almost... There's almost he, he is one of the only ones in the probably league you'd really fancy to score that goal when the ball's coming across and just steps onto it and it makes it look dead easy. Um, but an, an amazing amount of goals and I think history will reflect on him. This generation of Rangers fans will just remember the goals and not so much comparing them to yeah. past Rangers captains. What else impressed you from a Rangers point of view at the weekend, Barry? Some good football, but... Um, I, I like the way Rangers are physically as well they're, they're quite a physical team Paul um, it looks to me if they won't get bullied as much as they did probably previous uh, to the manager coming in um, as I said and, and overall Paul they're, they're in a good place uh, they're, they're, they're obviously showing that they, they've got the metal the big test is going to come on Sunday 
because listen, they're still playing against the champions who have got a lot of quality players. Um, but listen, this week's important for them. They need to go and they need to get their heads down and work hard and, and look forward to Sunday because Celtic are coming to the Ibrooks and they need to bring their A game. And if they do, I think they'll, they'll have a right good chance of winning the game. And Stephen, that was big news for Celtic yesterday. Cameron Carter-Vickers playing on that surface and Hatati as well, playing for what, nearly 65 minutes? Yeah, um, and, I th- and I think the Celtic guys getting out there will be glad that it's potentially the last time they play on that surface. Yeah. Um, looked, looked terrible on the, the television and they'll be thankful they'd get out there with, with no injuries or no reoccurrence because it's for too many times this season they've not been able to get the best team in the pitch. Again, yesterday, no McGregor. So very interesting to see how that one... I'm sure Celtic fans will be keeping an eye on the social media to see if he appears in any of the training pictures this week because I think Tomoki Awata, he does a good job for Celtic, break things up, but not not with the quality of Callum McGregor. And I think you've seen the difference um, Rio Hatati made in midfield. He was so bright, you could tell he was enjoying being back out there and all the good play came through him. Here's John Kennedy, of course, the manager, Brendan Rodgers, was in the stand. Very good, you know, controlled performance. Kind of limited to loving the next to nothing. Um, we scored some very good goals. So it was a pleasing afternoon because, as I said before the game, it's, it can be difficult here. You know, in terms of the, a day like today when the sun's shining and it dries the pitch up, it's not easy to play on. But the boys, you know, stuck at it. We're relentless in terms of just maintaining those attacks and eventually dropped them. We got the win. Yeah, 3 0 Celtic. Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, first half, obviously, I was going to have energy, but when so much into the blocks and, and trying to track you, then, you know, as, as the game goes on, we know it'll open up. So, again, it's easy to, especially this time of season, to get, you know, drawn into chasing something and doing something that we're not used to. We just continue to do what we do, and that's what the players know. And you can see that second half, the calmness of them, just maintained, you know, that, that uh, ability to maintain pressure. And eventually they break down and we get a goal. So that's that's important for us. Barry, what did you make of Celtic? Yeah, I, I, again, it was just a matter of time, mm. Paul. Look, Livingston set up in a way to try and frustrate. Um, but listen, Celtic moved the ball and uh, at some stage within the game, they're going to switch off um, or, or start to tie and that's what they've done. As soon as Celtic got the first goal, Paul, it was just, again, similar to what it says about Rangers, it was how many it was going to be. So it was pretty convincing in the end. Livingston, you, you can see they're clearly struggling, clearly struggling, um, and the, and that surface. Just watching it, yeah. it, it looks just. I mean, I've there's some astroturf or artificial surfaces, sh- should I say, in Scotland that I think are are pretty decent, but that one looks horrendous to play on. Yeah. Next season will still be. I think Kilmarnock's the following season, isn't it? That yep, they're going they're to the change it. Season, Pity yeah. it's not next year, and they should make it a rule that no artificial surface. I would imagine. That's yeah, what should happen. even I mean, if if they're not going to vote out the rule, they should vote in a rule that you have to. You can't you can't let the pitch go like that. We we had our, our pitch get renewed in, uh, in the summer, brand new Astro, mm-hmm. and honestly, it plays really well. Uh, it's faster. Boys enjoy playing it. It's a, a massive difference. But I think if you're going to have an Astro pitch, you need to get it changed every maybe every second year because they're given. I mean. Everyone's playing on it. They're playing cup finals, school games, members of the public paying to play on it. At the top level in the country, it shouldn't be allowed. It shouldn't. Barry Cameron, Carter Vickers, you often speak about him. You can see the difference with him back yesterday for Celtic. Although they weren't really troubled, but... He, he... Uh, it, in my opinion, he strolls it. it. That's the best way I could describe it. And, and they, they do look a bit, you know, a bit more. They are more solid, no doubt about it. When he's not in that, that back line, I think Celtic really struggle uh, and you can see the difference. He, he just brings a calmness. But also, he's a leader as well. You can see that and the, the difference he, he made is there for everybody to see. And um, it looks to me if he's, he's now away from the niggly injuries that he's had over the season. Do you think Callum McGregor will play this weekend, Barry? We'll talk about it a lot between now and Sunday. But what's your feeling? He'll play. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He'll play. No doubt about that. Stephen? Yeah, I'm expecting Cal McGregor to play. He's, he's so important and I think he'll be desperate to be, be out there and potentially, had it not been the surface, he might have got a run out at some point yesterday. What are you thinking about the game coming up and what did you think about the weekend, Rangers fans, Celtic fans or any other team? Aberdeen winning 2-1 against Ross County. Hearts and Kilmarnock 1-1. Motherwell St Mirren 1-1. And Dundee taking the points in the derby up there at St. Johnson. Uh, let's hear a bit more. Philippe Clement speaking about James Tavernier now in the record books, more goals than any other defender in Britain. Yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing achievement. Also, 
because he still has a couple of years to go. So he can only make this record <laughs> bigger and bigger. And if you speak about all history of football, you cannot imagine how many good defenders and how many defenders with a lot of attacking qualities have played the game. So to be there on top, yeah, it's an amazing achievement. And we're all proud of him. I said it in the dressing room also after the game. I don't point out uh, too much individual players. I don't like it too much, but I had to do it this time. And all the players are really proud of him. All staff also and, uh, and all fans and everybody in the board and everybody involved with Rangers because it's, it's really quite uh, exceptional. Stephen, do you sense that the Rangers fans have really warmed to him now? He took a lot of criticism a few years ago, then he won the 55 and that changed it. But then when Celtic won the next two years, but this year is vital for him and he has, uh, he's come into his own. Hasn't he? Yeah, about yeah, the cap, the captain. Yeah, I mean, as you say, he just he has that kind of laid back style almost. He, as I said, with Barry, the Rangers captain, previous Rangers captains, he they have a real presence, and you can see them grabbing games with a scruff of the neck. He's never going to be that guy. I mean, I was at the game earlier this season when the banner went up at, at St. Mum. Yeah, but he's just he, he's got a resilience. I mean, he's never injured. He's, he, he never seems to let it affect him. Um, the amount of games he plays is, is amazing, as I said, uh, at a really high level. So I think he's just got used to it, and I think he's almost immune to it. He's been up here for so long. He's used to pl- playing in, he's, he's played in some poor Rangers teams that have taken a lot of stick, but he's he's always out there, and that's what you want any teammate, to be able to take him through the storm, not chuck it, not back out, miss a couple of games and, and let the, the heat go, he, he's always out there. And you've played against him a number of times? Yeah, yeah. yeah was, I mean, it's not often you play against a team and the right back spoken about as one of the attacking players, but you, you adjust your team to, because because he's a threat, he's a massive threat, he's a goal-scoring threat, so, um, and I'm sure the battle with Dyson Maida again, I think he's a really keenly, keenly contested and I think he's an absolute certainty to play against Avenue on Sunday. Barry, that banner at St Mirren seems a long time ago, doesn't it? You know, the, the banners about Rangers when under Michael Beale. It feels like another season. Yeah, there's, there's clearly a change. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's no doubt you can see that with the, the performances on the pitch. But listen, a, any footballer, you're always going to have doubters, Paul. You just need to put it at the back of your mind and go and um, prove them wrong on the pitch. And that's why giving good... Um, displays and as Tavernier's done over the years as um, the amount of goals and a lot of people say it's penalties but you've still got to have the nerve to stand up there and, and put it in the back of the net and he's missed a few yeah. but it doesn't seem to seem to affect him so yeah it's a, a brilliant record to hold we'll talk penalties shortly when we get to the VAR section but Barry I see Lennon Miller's been tipped for a transfer to Rangers in the summer according to Derek Ferguson your big brother mm. what do you think do you think you could see him there yeah, I like yeah. him, Paul. We spoke yeah. about him a, a yeah. few times on the, the show. Every time I've, I've watched a young man play, he, he, he plays with a maturity about him. Um, and he, obviously central midfielder, you, you tend to look at that area of the pitch more often than, than not, and he, he's certainly impressed. And I, I, I can see, I'm sure Rangers, I'm sure Celtic, I'm sure there'll be some big clubs down south keeping an eye on him because he's certainly, he's impressed when he's he's come into that model team. And he's only 17 as well, as I, I, I keep... He's playing, he's playing years above himself, in my opinion. And um, as I said, he's he's a fantastic young talent. Hopefully, he keeps his feet on the ground, which I'm sure his his dad will be on it every single day. He'll have a big future in the game. And when he came on against uh, the game at the weekend, he improved Motherwell, didn't he? When he came back on, yeah. He's, I mean, for a 17 year old, he's such a huge player for Motherwell. Yeah. Uh, the players like when he when he's fat and, yeah. and playing for them he's not one of those you need to take him off because he gets late and you need to get the young one off to try and see a result he's one of the ones that, that helps to, to, them to get across the line so I, I, I don't think this summer's the right time I think it helps his dad being, at, um, being in football he knows and I think the patient spoke to them they're, they're happy at Motherwell he loves that he's really growing um, on each performance but I think they've just got a, the calmness to it they know, he's, they know where he wants to get to but they're not in a rush I see Derek also mentioned Connor Barron, perhaps for Rangers. Would you see him make that step up from Aberdeen? Yeah, it was a free transfer in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, really talented player. I watched him last week for the 21s. Um, I can't see him getting into the Celtic Rangers midfield at this, this time. The reason he would appeal to me if it was a Celtic Rangers would obviously the quota for being Scottish. He's a young, very talented kid. He's a free transfer. He ticks a lot of boxes. Um, but I, I just couldn't see him 
at this moment in time getting a game for Celtic Rangers Barry I think he's a good young player but I, I agree with Stephen I, I can't see him forcing his way into either midfield Paul mm. I, I, I'm just being honest yeah. Look, he, he, he's impressed when he's played with Aberdeen no doubt about it um, but there's no fee there it's a free transfer so um, it, it could be a possibility um, but if you're asking me if he f- could force his way in at the, this moment in time to either Rangers or Celtic's midfield I would say no it's also you look at Kelly at Celtic maybe yeah. a Bailey Rice at Rangers mm-hmm. they, the academy guys will probably feel like they've got someone like for like that they'd yeah. like to push from within their own academy so I think it's great to see Kelly again come on get yeah. minutes mm-hmm. um, nearly scored didn't he yeah, yeah. Uh, looked, at, looked like he's not headed the ball yeah. very often, but <laughs> well, he should have scored. Yeah, yeah. he should have yeah. scored. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of a you're not allowed to coach it. To be fair to the, the kids now, you're not allowed to coach heading Head, all the you're time. Not allowed no, to. no, not a, even limited. No, yeah, it's very limited right. though. It's, okay. It's very limited, but um, it's no, it's a dying art. Sure, as goal of the weekend, Barry would it have been Lyle Cameron? What a strike, the youngster! Yeah. Well, yeah, brilliant strike. Um, good player as well. Yeah, uh, he's he's impressed. Um, certainly we we Dundee this year who in my opinion I was I thought they would have struggled mm-hmm. oh, but you've got to give them all the credit in the world Tony Dockery's went up there and done a fantastic job I think his recruitment's been really good uh, and they're a decent team and that was a big win uh, for them at the weekend against St Johnson How far out was it would you say? Because I heard him say 35 yards then it became 40 yeah. I thought it was about 35 I'll go for 37 yeah. and a half You will <laughs> Alright In between Yeah Obviously, Doc, Tony Doc was my assistant manager at Kilmarnock, yeah. and I bumped into him at the reserve game a few months back, and um, I said to him, "You're doing great." Like actually, when he took the job, first time being a manager, and if you remember, they had ha- half a team, and you know, he yeah. hadn't needed to go yeah. out and recruit a full team. And I says, "Like you've blown a bit of smoke up him." I was saying, "You've done a great job." I thought it would be struggle with how many players you need to bring in. He says, "No, that was perfect. That's why I wanted the job. I had the vision of how I wanted my team to look at, and I was able to go and recruit." Um, perfect, like perfectly to to fit the way he wanted to play, and as I said, it's an amazing job. Newly promoted team and a real contender for top six. Easter Monday, Paul, Barry, and Stephen. Barry, how's he looking after twenty minutes of the program? Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's looking better than that. <laughs> yes, better than yeah. I thought. Um, no doubt about it. He's he's got a look as it there. Yeah. He's got yeah. a coffee there yeah. at Starbucks he's got his chingum he's got his polar mints um, so he's obviously had a, a good couple of days 08 08 17 17 700 The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property Looking to sell property in Glasgow call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 Let's go Let's go back onto the lines now Ross is on the line a Celtic fan Good evening Ross Hi Paul, Barry, Stephen, hope you're well. Yeah, good, you having a good Easter Monday? Yeah, it's been good, it's been good. First of all, uh, congratulations Stephen on your promotion at the weekend at the Championship. So Thanks mate, appreciate well it. Done. Thank you. Um, no, I thought obviously Paul, in terms of the game yesterday, uh, I thought Celtic first half looked dead leggy. We didn't look, I thought it was going to be one of the games where we were going to skip a 1-0 yesterday, but I think for me the second half is brilliant in terms of the goals that we scored. Um, and I think a big boost for Hattati coming back um, ahead of the weekend so but I think for me McGregor's got to come back in hopefully Sunday if he's fit um, and as I say having Hattati and Carter Vickers ahead of, ahead of Sunday is a massive massive boost Stephen you were saying that earlier it's huge for them to have yeah I don't, th- I don't think yeah. at times this season I don't think the squad's um, done enough for Celtic some of the games that these guys have missed Um some of the guys coming in haven't stepped up they've dropped too many silly points but it is very hard to um, play down the significance of having Hattati and Carter Vickers fit for going to Ibrox it's the toughest game Celtic have had but they've got to they've got to have a bit of confidence going in having these guys fit and also they're playing against a team that they've beaten twice already uh, psychologically I think it's a big thing the title race when um, you feel as if the other team can't beat you would you expect them to go in the 90 minutes though? I know they're three different individuals. Yeah, I do. Because yeah. I think, they, I mean, if they're fat, I, don't, I think the drop-off in quality is pretty significant. Um, so I think Brendan Rodgers will be looking to get 95 whatever minutes mm. we play in, in Sunday to get as much as, as much tight time out of them as they can. Barry, what do you feel on all three? It, there's the three probably most important players at, at Celtic. No, no doubt about it. Um, you've seen a difference both of them made yesterday, even um, 
it wasn't great in the first half, but the, the difference in the second half. And it, listen, it, it takes you a bit of time, and you're out for a few months. Um, it does take you a bit of time to get up to speed. But they're so important. They're so important, Carter Vickers, um, Hitati, and, and Callum McGregor. I mean, I'm sure um, he'll he'll start the game in, in Sunday. And if you look at that, Paul, that's your spine of your team. It's the most sure. important part. Stephen will tell you. That's where managers like to build, have a real strong spine. And the three players that I mentioned are, are part of that at Celtic. And Ross, Matt O'Reilly back on it yesterday. Would that be fair? Yeah, no, definitely. It was good to see Matt back at it again. So, as I say, just ahead of Sunday, um, it's massive as it is. And we know for a fact that we're going against a team that are very, very good and scoring goals. And I expect it'll be a lots of goals on Sunday. I actually think it'll be three each. That's my final feeling. I think it'll be three each. Um, and I think two teams are after this year. Um, but I think for Celtic's point of view, just I think having Carter Vickers at the back and Hatati in the middle, it's even matter this because, as I say, a water for me he's, he's one game you look at him and he's alright next game I'm not so sure but I think yesterday he looked good but for me Celtic's midfield and Sunday has got to be O'Reilly Hattati and McGregor I don't think there'd be any doubt about that Barry would there? No, well, if McGregor makes himself available, I, I think that will be the, the three that starts at, at Ibrox. I think that's the strongest three for Celtic, if I'm being honest. Look, what is good as a stopgap, he comes in and does a job because obviously Callum's been injured. But that, if you're saying every midfielder at Celtic is going to be fit, for, in my eyes, that's the strongest three for Celtic. Stephen? Yeah, um, I've got my team. I don't know if you. If, um, I actually play four midfielders. All right, Ross, do you want Stephen McGinn's team? If he's got it there, yeah, go for it. it. Yeah. So I think, yeah. I mean, Joe Hart and goals, Alistair Johnson, Carter Vickers, Scales, and, and Taylor. Mm-hmm. Um, the midfield, I, I would have, I don't know how you would shape it up, who would be the one that kind of plays off the right, but I wouldn't play the two wingers on Sunday. Going right. to, I would go with Awata and Callum McGregor, with Hatati and O'Reilly, right. maybe one of them just coming in off the right, playing Dyson and Maida off the left against mm-hmm. James Tavenier, and Kyle go through yeah. the middle. Um, I think Nicholas Coon's definitely improved over the last few weeks but I think it's going to be a really physical aggressive game on Sunday um, and I think the added presence of Awata in there beside McGregor um, might stiffen Celtic up a bit and for what is going to be a really tough game for him Sounds strong Barry what do you make of that lineup? Yeah it could be the case because I, I think at this moment in time as I said Rangers are playing well but it's they're pretty physical Rangers mm-hmm. Um, I, I've noticed that and I think they'll, they'll go that way in uh, Sunday um, against Celtic I think like Dijon Sterling will start on the, the right hand side um, Silva off the left and the, the three in the middle of the pitch would be Lundstrom, Dale Monday and, and Cantwell so it'll be interesting to see what they do because they've got options uh, both Rangers and Celtic have got options um, so I'm sure the managers are, are scratching their head just now wondering um, what they're going to do but come the middle of the week that's when their, their minds are made up and what's the manager saying to Sterling make it difficult try and exploit down the left against uh, Greg Taylor and also Liam Scales yeah I mean if you look at it that, that that's maybe an area that Rangers will try and exploit Dijon's played there um, a number of times for for, um, for Rangers he's real physical but he's a good footballer as well Dijon Sterling it's not, he's not just a big physical strong runner he's, a, he's actually a good football player so I can see that way because when he plays with Tavernier they interchange really well they work well together um, but listen I could be completely wrong he might go with a, a wide player but I would imagine he'll play with Dijon Sterling on the right hand side you're usually right Ross what do you make of Stevens line up then with Iwata and McGregor in there in the midfield um, I think for me I would make two changes from yesterday uh-huh. I would keep the same I would keep the majority of the team for yesterday and my two changes for Sunday would be McGregor in for Iwata and I would put Adam Eder in for Kyogo. That would, that would be my two changes for Sunday. I just think the, the Kyogo one, I think Kyogo plays. The joy he's had against um, Connor Goldson and um, John Souter, whoever else has played there over the last year, I think seven and six games against Rangers in the last calendar year. I, I think Kyogo, for the little spell there where Adam Eder had the jersey, I was still thinking even if Ida keeps playing keeps scoring 
Okay, you'll go the first name in the team sheet for me at Ibrox because of the success he's had running in behind Connor Goldson. Ross, See, my thing there, yeah. Stephen, is my, 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 my thing there is I think if you start reader and say it's not going our way, we'll get the opportunity to bring Kyogo on. But I think if you start with Kyogo and it doesn't go your way, you're kind of really relying on Adam Nida to come on and get you a goal, which I think it would be better to go the opposite way. Um, but as I say, I, I think it'll be very, very tough on Sunday. Um, I think two teams are bang at it this year. Um, and I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game, but I'm also quite nervous as well because I would probably say Celtic, Celtic are probably need to win this um, to probably have any chance of winning the title. I think if it goes the opposite way and Rangers win the match, I, I don't see how Celtic can recover from that with Rangers having a game in hand. Barry, what would you say to that? If Rangers win at the weekend, title's on. Yeah, well, they, they, they put themselves in a, a, a brilliant position. Um, but I, I'm still wary, Paul. Like, uh, I, I know if they do beat Celtic, they're, they're, still, um, they're still games mm. after that. They're still, what, seven games after the, the Celtic game. But listen, all you can do is beat what's in front of you. I've, you've got to always be respectful because Celtic have still got a lot of quality players. Like, they're maybe not playing as well as they did last year. Um and I'm looking forward to seeing what way both teams um, certainly set up. In my eyes, if Kyogo's on the bench for Celtic, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. Because he's, he's a danger. Even if he's not yeah. playing um, as well as he has been, he, he's still he's still a major pro. I think if you ask the centre backs who they would rather play against, I think I, they would say either. Yeah, I think I th- Conor Goldson's he'll be, he'll be sitting there agreeing with, with Barry saying. Don't want to play against Kyogo. Adam Ida play against a big physical striker. He's did it, did it for years in, in England. Everything's in front of you. Kyogo is the amount of times he's standing offside. He's a pest. And, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just continues to run. And if you play him, when he plays in the shoulder, you've got to be wary of him. I didn't even think he'd a touch in the game until he nearly scored. The one, yep. I think he was given as an offside, but Aster Johnson cuts him across. He, he probably should score, mm-hmm. but he's just that kind of type of striker. He doesn't, take part in the game spends a lot of it offside yeah. but constantly constantly a threat and that was two minutes into stoppage time wasn't it in the first half yeah well no, that was uh, the, the one yeah. that he does amazing the ball in behind yeah. and he cuts back and hits it it's a great save from the goalkeeper actually yeah. um, but I mean one Ellen it was a good move from Celtic and I think it's eventually offside Ad- Alistair Johnson's played it across and he's just put it wide but it's just playing in behind you all the time I think it causes more problems than anything in front for Conor Goldson yeah, and John Sutter. Yeah, I think yeah, centre-backs I'd rather the games in front of them. And I think mm-hmm. that's what he does. Like, he's a big physical presence, no doubt about it. But Kyogo, he's always in the shoulder. He's running here, there and everywhere. And his centre-backs, um, I think if you ask any centre-backs, they would rather play against somebody who's more mm-hmm. plays centrally. But Kyogo's everywhere. Ross, it was a clean sheet for Celtic. Was that the first and seven? John Kennedy was asked in the interview on Sky afterwards. Yeah, it is. And it's always nice when we focus on the negatives. But uh, we've scored 17 goals out of the Hearts game. We've scored an three today, so it's good. Our defensive game is always important. We know that also gives us you know, momentum as well. Sometimes the games have been less comfortable because we've not defended moments right. But I think we've had interruptions there. We've had several injuries. We've had to make changes in game at the time, which doesn't help that side of it. But... You know, today we were strong, we were really strong there at the back and, and I don't think North Livingston actually had the corner. Um, but in the main, defending from the front, stopping Livingston, getting those accurate long balls into the big tall front players and playing off that. You know, we restricted that, we forced a lot of errors which also then presented chances for us as well. So all round it was very pleasing. He was a wee bit nippy there, wasn't he, Ross? Saying, oh, thanks for mentioning it. I mean, it is a fact, but that would be good for Joe Hart. You'll miss the big keeper next season, Ross. Yeah, I think so, Paul. I think it's it's obviously good to see that we've got another clean sheet under our belt and stuff. But I think yeah, with Joe Hart again, as I say, I was I'm still surprised to this day mm-hmm. that, he's, that he's called it a day and stuff because I do think he's still got it in him to do a job for Celtic. Um, but no, as I just say going into Sunday um, for the game on Sunday with Joe Hart and goals. As I just say that's another one that's a very very positive. And I'm just kind of glad as well for a point of view that we've come through yesterday without any further injuries. Yeah. So, um, but no, for me, de- de- definitely, I think Celtic will miss Joe Hart next year. But it's all about trying to finish this season and hopefully give Joe Hart a good send off. 3 3, you reckon, for the weekend. Barry, you'd be happy with the three goals for Rangers. You'd not be so fussed on three against you. 
No, but team. listen, I, I see Ross's point. It, it yeah. could be one of these games that, that, that they really... Both teams, I think, will go for it. I have no doubt about it. I think um, they know how important it is. I mean, they're always important, but I have got a feeling that both will go ham and tong at it. Um, and uh, I hope I'm no putting a dent on the game, but I think it's going to be a cracker, Paul. I do get that feeling. Who's going to be the referee? I think we'll find out tomorrow. Stephen... What do you feel about the game itself? I've got a bit more yeah. doubt than, than Ross and Barry okay. in the game. Probably just watching the Man City Arsenal game and how important it was to both teams not to lose. I mean, they served up quite a poor game. Yeah. And there's always a chance with this game because there's another game which might be a decider at Celtic Park. Um, this game it could be quite tense and it, we, we might see a bit of what Man City Arsenal was yesterday. Well, nil nil would suit Celtic the winner, Ross. You wouldn't be unhappy with that at Ibrox, would you? No, if, see if it finishes now, now, yeah, we'll take it. But I just think I know what Stephen's saying there about the Arsenal Man City game, but I watched the game yesterday, Stephen, and honestly, it's one of the worst now now I've ever watched. I don't think two of them are bothered about it. Um, and I think Sunday will be nothing like that. I think Sunday is just 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 what Barry said. That I think it'll be a hundred miles an hour. I think two of them will go for it, and I generally do think there'll be loads of goals in it. Well, we're going to find out. We'll be here. We'll be on live from 11.30, so on the way to the game, Barry. I know you'll be tuned in, although you'll be there a wee bit earlier. John Hartson's going to be here, and Chris Burke, who, of course, uh, won titles with Rangers. So he was with us a couple of seasons ago, wasn't he, Barry? But obviously he's on the coaching staff now at Kelly. Yeah, he's he... um, under-18 manager yeah. uh, down at uh, Kilmarna. Uh, good, uh, right good career, wee Burke. Played them a number of times. But good to see he's in the coaching side of it. Yeah, I'll be good. tuned in to listen to him to see how, he's, how he performs on Sunday excellent tomorrow <laughs> someone else that you played alongside Craig Moore will join John Hartson tomorrow night then it's you me and Peter Grant on Wednesday Neil McCann joins us for the first time mm. along with Andy Walker and Neil listens sometimes doesn't he and he's yep. a terrific pundit what a player Barry I'll ask you more about that as the week goes on maybe a message for him coming in he'll join us on uh, as Thursday just as say some nice things about me what do you That's think I'm sure no, he will no but I tell you I, what a brilliant player mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I say that many a times. People ask me about my my favourite eleven. Neil Neil McCann would always be in it. Um, not just a good footballer, Paul, an absolute workhorse yeah. as well. And then Friday night's going to be Barry, myself, and Mark Guidi will be back with us then. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the market with help from their team of experts. Let's go. It's the Go Radio Football Show, quarter to six. Easter Monday, hope you had a great Easter. Much chocolate, no, no point looking at you, Stephen, because it was celebrations uh, at the at the weekend. Barry with the family, did you have a good time? Plenty of chocolate? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big chocolate fan, no. if I'm being honest, yeah. Paul. Aye, but a good bit of family time. Was at the game, obviously, on Saturday uh, and yesterday. Just lazed about, spent a bit of time with the family, which is always good. Great. And um, Manchester City against that big disappointment, wasn't it? it. Nah. No. Didn't enjoy the game no. one single bit. Big and, and do you know what? Quite a few of the Premier League games I've watched this season, mm -hmm. have, it's not been enjoyable to, to watch. I expected more. Um, but listen, sometimes you get that when, when two quality teams come up against each other, they cancel, the, uh, cancel each other out. It was a big win for Liverpool then, wasn't it? 2-1 and they came back from behind. So. Huge. And they're yeah. a good team, Brighton. Yeah. Mm. Very good team. So that was a big a big three points for Liverpool. Two points clear now at the, the top of the Premier League. Um, but I, again, that one's going to get right down to the wire. Yeah. Stephen, what's happening down south today? I know the big win for Leicester City early this afternoon. See Jamie Vardy scoring uh, an injury time, so 3-1 for them. Yeah, I mean, uh, the one thing, the title races are, are shaping up. Mm -hmm. uh, three teams separated by yeah. a point in that league. Um, Leicester winning Ipswich are 1-0 up already against Southampton. So Southampton are obviously one of the ones that were in the race up until a, a month or two ago. So it'd be a real big win for Ipswich, that. I see West Brom and your old team Watford. Is that 2-2 at the moment? Yeah, 2-2, two, two, yeah. Uh, finished 2-2. Two, two. Right. Watford yeah. been 2-0. Oh, my ex-teammates, caretaker manager, uh, Tom Cleverley. So I delighted wish. that Watford have got someone in charge that gets a club and not just... You feel like sometimes they appoint a manager just for three or four months and then they're off -ski. Um Tom Cleverley, chance of getting that job full-time and get the club a bit more identity again. It's a mad club. Is it? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, in oh, terms of the manage, the amount yeah, of managers, wow. the turnover of managers at that club's unbelievable. It, it was honestly it was such a brilliant community club. Mm -hmm. And they've had a lot of success in the Pots. Yeah. They've been in the Premier League and stuff like that. Some of the, I mean, they'd have, the owners would have guys that would run down to tell 
the manager who sob and went it You're was kidding. a yeah. mess, yeah. Wow. Three managers a season is the average, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. But it, it's because yeah. they want you run the club and they can't take losing. Is that the Italian game. owners? Yeah, Italian, mm. the Pozzo family. Are Leicester going to come back up now, Barry? Do you reckon they're back on the. the they couldn't buy a win there for a little while? No, they couldn't. They yeah. were strong. I mean, if you, you'd said to me that a couple of months mm. ago, they were absolute yeah. flying. They were coasting it. Um, but it just shows you football is crazy at times. Um, and again, I think that's one of the, the, the titles that is going to go to the last couple of games of the season. Stuart, who listens in sometimes from Yorkshire, he's a big Sunderland fan. What's happened there? Since they dispensed with Tony Mowbray some months ago, it's gone Pete Tong, Barry, hasn't it? It has. It just shows you how good a job Tony, Tony Mowbray yeah. actually mm-hmm. actually done. I, I thought it was harsh on him, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest with you. Um, fantastic club, Sunderland. I mean, yeah. lucky enough to play there. I don't know if Stevens played there. The stadium light is brilliant when it's full. Brilliant atmosphere. Um, also, my brother used to play there. I used to go down to the old Roker right Park like um, with, my, wow. with my dad. And, what was that like? And watched, yeah, it was yeah. good. Just an old school stadium. <laughs> um, used to love going down and, and watching them. And it's always a team I've kind of kept an eye on because mm-hmm. obviously I haven't done there to watch my, my brother obviously mm-hmm. playing. But um, yeah, I, I thought they were... I thought it was uh, harsh in Tony Mowbray losing his job. Sure was. Sunderland, get past that. Yeah, I think sometimes you forget Michael Beale was obviously in there for such That's a right, short yeah. space of time. But I remember when he sacked Tony Mowbray and you just couldn't understand. Mm. It was such a good team to watch. And at the moment, I hope he's keeping okay with his health. Mm. He obviously had to step aside from Birmingham for health reasons. So I hope he's, he's okay, first and foremost. But a mental decision to get rid of him at Sunderland and they've paid the price since. Other teams, what are you thinking after the weekend? Motherwell and St Mirren, so that was good for Motherwell to get a point. And for St Mirren, what are you thinking? Uh, Kelly, a point at Hearts. So Hearts are pretty much nailed on, I would think, to be third. And Dundee, wow, what a job he's doing against, uh, well, St Johnson 2-1 at the weekend. Saints not out of it yet. And Ross County losing to Aberdeen. How they needed that when it was Jamie McGrath who got... Uh, the winner, uh, Simon Murray, had equalised, and it was uh, Bojan Miofsky, or was it an own goal for the first one? 08 08 17 17 700. Shall we look at VAR? G A R, the Go Assisted Referee, on the Go Radio Football Show with CSD Air Conditioning. Comforting air quality all year round. Barry Ferguson and Stephen McGinn. Barry, will we start the three o'clock kickoff at Ibrox at the weekend and the penalty? <laughs> Was that a penalty? The... No, I, I thought it was a, a coming together, if, I, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but the aftermath of the, of the penalty, yeah. I think the manager says, I think Scott Wright's boots were a bit too big yeah. um, when, when that got disallowed. Yeah. Just, there was uh, also a Hibs player right yeah, beside him in it, the box. Exactly. I mean, I, I just think it's the wrong decision, Paul, if I'm being honest with you. I know he stepped in, but what? An inch? If you're lucky, but in terms of the the penalty being given, I thought I thought it was harsh on on Hibs. Why does this happen these days? Why are they getting involved? In, you know, I, I don't I understand don't it because Triantes and Suter no. Suter wasn't going to get to the ball, no. but he does get smacked in the face. But it's just mental. I mean, there's not a single Rangers fan yep. in the ground watches that back and says oh, that's a Stonewall penalty. You just both of them caught, kind of caught underneath the ball. There's going to be contact, um, and to give a penalty and then to to top it all off to give encroachment and disallow the goal. Yeah. Mm. What are they? What are they doing? What are they seeing? Seriously, like what? I don't understand mm. because if you watched every penalty that's been scored in the Scottish Premier League over the last a year or two years, I bet you there's been more encroachment, mm. encroachment at penalties. Mm. Or goals. I bet you could find about 15, 20 clips of people that have actually been in the box. They don't pull it back, but all of a sudden, randomly, they just pull it back. They're not helping themselves. They're not. They're making it difficult, aren't they? Yeah, Why? They, they are. Yeah. Uh, and it's like they're bored. Mm. They need to come up with something. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it, it was a harsh penalty, but in terms of what Stephen just mentioned, they had the encroachment in the box. Come on now, man. Uh, Stephen's bang on. Yeah. I think if you watch every single penalty that's been given in the Premier League, I think 90% of them would have been encroachment into the box. For sure. The following day then, the big game on Sky yesterday. So the talking point in that first half, wasn't it, was when Kyogo was tackled. And at first there didn't seem to be much in it. But when you saw there was one in the views which looked as though uh, Devlin had clattered the player, what did you think? 
Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, I feel as if it's the way Livingston defended all afternoon. They were slow to things, they were lashing at things. In real play, I thought Kyogo's tried to play for a penalty. I, did, I thought he was trying to get to the ball first and invite the contact. So when it's played on, didn't have a huge problem with it. But when you see it back, you, you, you think, at least send the ref over at the monitor. At least, because there's, there's different angles of it where it looks a clear penalty. Mm. I mean, and no doubt. And that's what you mean with the referees. Like, why... They get sent to the monitor for daft things, yeah. and then there's an, a genuine decision. Look, you might have got that wrong. Have a look at it. See if he goes over at the monitor and he decides it's still not enough for a penalty. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But what? Yeah. Like, where does the communication come that not to send them over at the monitor? And play had stopped. They could have taken time to look at it. Barry, what did you feel on that one? Yeah, I didn't think it was a penalty to start with, but also mm -hmm. we've got the the great thingy. Obviously, mm -hmm. still images and obviously different angles. Of the replay, he, uh, he, he's come through the back of his calf. He has mm -hmm. took him. Um, there was one angle, I think it was, from behind the goal, where you see, um, what was the player? Devlin. It, yeah, Mickey, Mickey Devlin. Devlin. Yep. Yep, he, he does come come through him. But again, what, what Stephen just mentioned there, how they've not brought it to mm -hmm. the attention for the referee to go and have a, a look at it. Um, but again, Paul, I'm not even surprised anymore. I'm not. For sure. People are, I see Hibs had something in the social media um, saying did it, who had that time, whatever time it was, the, the penalty came for Rangers. They were um, maybe have been a wee bit naughty, mm -hmm. saying uh, a bit of humour in it. April Fool's Day today, James, executive producer, saying, What's the biggest joke in football today? Other than VAR. Barry, would that be? Any great April Fool's pranks over the years? or Don't. No. Nah. No, any that I can say on no. air, Paul, right, if okay. I'm honest. Yeah. Was there a few wind-ups? <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. a few in the dress rooms sure. that um, I'm sure I would get ourselves into trouble if I, if I told you them. Um, but James has made a good point there. Mm. VAR is. It's yeah. becoming a, an absolute joke. It's ruining the game, Paul. Mm. I'm just not enjoying it. Crawford Allen will be going at the end of the season. Who is going to take it on? Will it make any changes? Because it, it's just not working, is it, Stephen? Yeah. But it, there must be there must be a way of getting it better. I feel yeah. when you watch European Celtic Rangers and European competitions, it seems to be better. It just seems to be smoother. They seem to get the big decisions right more often than not. Um, there must be a way of making it better up here. Anything else var wise at the weekend, Barry? Um, yeah, we can I think, think of was there the Motherwell St Mirren game was a bare a handball question over that one. He, with that one, it was almost. Yep. That is that is my issue with the, the handball rule. Because referees, I mean, St Martin are going for European football. That's right, yeah. You're claiming for everything. You, you have evidence of handballs uh, in previous games. Theo Bears got his hands up. It's hit his arm. Um, when you see what penalties have been given for, you've got every right to, cl to claim for it. But that's going back to a problem. I, I feel the handball rules, nobody's sure what it is. Yeah. Before Barry, you'd have said, no, nothing to see there. But often, they do stop it. Theo Bear's arm was up, wasn't it? And the ball struck him. So you yeah. could say that should be a penalty. But there wasn't too much this weekend. Wonder if there will be next week. I hope not, Barry. I hope we're talking about some great play by whoever it is. Yeah, you know, I, I hope that is the case, Paul. Some right good football, some good play, fantastic goal. Um, and it's nothing. Uh, Vard doesn't come into the conversation mm. um, a week today. Not much chance of that, though, is there? <laughs> G-A-R The Go-Assisted Referee On the Go Radio Football Show With CSD Air Conditioning 24-hour heating and cooling specialists Going to take some calls in the next hour 0808 08, 17 17 700 I see the government, the UK government Has invited Holyrood to review whether or not uh, The national games should be added to the Crown Jewel list of free-to-air sports events I think they should be. I think everyone should be able to see the games. I get it. Viaplay are paying money and that helps the game here. So on one hand, we don't get enough money in, in the game. But see for, you know, the national team, men's and women's should be on the telly in my view. Stephen, what do you feel? Yeah, always. I mean, England have every single game um, on, on TV free to everyone. So I don't see why it should be different for us. Um, and then for the yeah. first time in a while we have one in the BBC and it's our poorest performance in years. I'm just about to say, where, where did you watch the, the game? Viaplay. 
Oh, did you? Tuesday? Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. I did. I put the BBC thing and a few people said they all look as though they're at a funeral uh, track site. People came on. I'm sure they were, BBC. There uh, they go. I'm sure they were doing a great job. They're great punt- uh, pundits. But did Punters. you see them? <laughs> pundits and punters. But from a view, it looked as though it was uh, Fosters that were uh, sponsoring it. But no, I watched it in Viaplay, as it turned out. Stephen, yeah, you were there. Yeah, no, I watched no. on BBC yeah. as well. Right. My girl's birthday, so yeah, I, missed, I missed this one. So shocking, yeah. no going to watch his brother, isn't it? I know exactly. <laughs> Benji, the kids. No, oh, they yeah, come first. Of course, glory hunting yeah. the summer. Exactly. Oh wait, oh wait, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. One hour has flown in. We're back after the news. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team, and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go. When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. We are into April. Falkirk are the champions of Division 1. Who's it going to be in the championship? Dundee United helped themselves with a win over Wraith Rovers at the weekend. And for the Cinch Premiership, Rangers going ahead on Saturday, 3-1 against Hibs. And Celtic back on top yesterday after a three-goal victory, 3-0 against Livingston. So the top of the table is like this. Celtic have played 31 games. They have 74 points. Rangers I've got one more to play. They've got one game in hand there. 30 games played, 73 points. Then the gap to Hearts on 56 points. Killy on 45. St Mirren on 43. Dundee on 39. And then the bottom six, Hibs on 38. Motherwell on 33, along with Aberdeen. St Johnson on 28. Ross County 27. Livingston on 17. Barry Rangers, of course, uh, with uh, that game in hand. It was the game at Dundee, which would have been two weeks ago yesterday, called off because of the weather. Yeah, it's the Wednesday after yeah. the, the, the Celtic game. Um, well, ideally, before the, the international break, you would have liked to have had the game on, but I think we spoke about it. The circumstances, the way it was handled wasn't the, the, the best. But when you watch... The referee throwing the ball about, Paul. There was no chance the game could have went ahead. Um, you've just got to deal with these situations. Um, and, and Rangers have, have dealt with the first game back after the, the international break um, pretty well, pretty convincingly yesterday. And all eyes now are on um, next Sunday, Sunday at 12 o'clock, which um, I'm really looking forward to. Stephen, you're playing on Sunday, aren't you? You've, or you've got a game involved this coming Sunday, so will you catch... The Derby? Oh yeah, the just uh, to help me uh, win some more younger teams and okay. we're yeah. actually playing Rangers on the Sunday morning. So I'll miss the first half an hour of the, the game but yeah. I'll get the second half and hopefully some of the six goals that Ross is the caller was uh, predi- yeah. uh, predicting. Yeah. yeah, Let's see, we'll find out. Remember we're here on Sunday from 11.30 so as you head to the game or if you're not at the match, I know it's great coverage on the telly but you can hear Big John Hartson along with Chris Burke. <coughs> Um, John Kennedy was speaking obviously instead of um, the manager who was in the stand yesterday what about the Kyogo incident should it have been a penalty? I haven't seen it back properly I've only seen it briefly at the time again if once I see it I'll know better but at the time Kyogo's adamant it was about contact there he got his body in front but again I don't want to make that a talking point we'll just come up a, a very good performance in a 3-0 win The talking points were the three goals for Celtic 0-0 at half time you heard Ross earlier on Celtic fans what are you thinking 08-08-17-17-700 08, Ky- Kyogo didn't score but he came close Hatati scored but it ended up being a, um, an own goal and uh, Matt O'Reilly back on form we talked about him earlier on played well yeah, um, he'll be delighted to get back in the score sheet, um, help him hand from the Livingston goalkeeper. Yeah. Uh, haven't he made a lot of good saves in the game, but it's probably his poorest, maybe the poorest shot of the game that he lets, mm. lets go in. But he'll be delighted going and an assist, obviously laid it off for Paulo Bernardo to score a good goal. So Celtic need the Matt O'Reilly of Ireland this season. Yeah. If, they, if they're going to win the league, they need him to be his very best. Owen's been on asking, do you think he was affected by all the chat about Atletico Madrid? I'm not sure he was ever going to go mid-season. Potentially. I mean, okay. yeah. Athletic Madrid, one of the top clubs um, in Europe. I'm assuming there would have been some sort of contact with his agent or with um, 
a club doesn't even need to be Atletico Madrid a young player starring in the Champions League um, size of him he's, he's spoke about him lots of times I'm sure there was interest from somewhere it may have turned his head um, but Celtic need him as I said the form of the first half of the season for the, for the last six, seven games Paulo Bernardo have been a good couple of weeks for him isn't it scoring for, and captaining the under 21s for Portugal and that was a good strike yesterday yeah, he came on, he affected the game. Mm. That's what you want from your substitutes. Um, good finish into the, the goalkeeper's bottom right-hand corner. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what Celtic do come the summer uh, with him. Because um, there's a few games that I've certainly been impressed by him. No doubt about that. He's still young. I still think there's a, a still a fair bit of improvement to come. Um, but certainly, he's found his feet now, Paul. He is a good footballer, there's no doubt about that. Um, and as I said good finish when he came on yesterday and for Rangers the Tavernier volley in 26 minutes putting him in the record books uh, then Cyril Desers well of course Hibs the, the only you said that Barry the only one attempt on goal and they got the goal and, and that's a worry Maulida he's a decent player isn't he yeah but, I mean, but that, that's a frustrating thing from Rangers point of view uh, the one attempt on goal they, they, they score but the good thing about that there was a, a, a response Paul mm straight away and that's what they did because if you go in at half time Stephen I tell you that gives Hibs, Hibs the confidence the fans become a bit unsettled um, but to get that goal just bang on half time set Rangers up for the second half they, they've scored a lot of goals and that kind of yeah. uh, certainly yeah. I mean Celtic got a lot of uh, talk of scoring late goals in the second half but Rangers have a lot of goals near the end of the first half and it really takes some momentum out of you and Hibs haven't just equalised and then they're sitting at half time thinking Phew, we need to go and try and do that again. Yeah. Rangers boys, pressure's off. and um, Yeah, really, really important timing for the Dessers goal. Barry, I see that was 45 plus seven minutes. What happened in the first half? That's the, the VAR situation with the penalty, Paul. It's crazy, isn't it? Yep. Deciding whether it was a penalty, then obviously the encroachment from from Scott Wright. When you're actually sitting there, it is, it is frustrating watching it. Um, I wouldn't like to play in it, if I'm being honest with no. you. Yep. That's, as you mentioned, I mean, I think there was eight minutes added on, eight or nine minutes. Um, so, yep, that's the, the other thing that I think some of the decisions are taking so long. And you think that would get better the longer we've had VAR, but uh, that's not the case. Hard to keep the food right for you at half time for the Chateaubriand <laughs> or, the, or the pie. Um, the uh, manager was asked. steak pie for me. Yeah, what about the score of the second goal, Serial Desert? The manager was asked about the Mercurial striker. Um, Impress is not a good word. I think it's it's normal what he can do, um, and I think it's there's still quite some margin to make with him, and he's working really hard on that. But for me, and I said this already a few times, and I know you guys don't believe that maybe, but for me, the striker is not only important that he scores goals. They need to do much more other things also for the team. And then they will come in situations that they can score goals. But for me, it's important to have a team where everybody can score. Because that's much more difficult to stop. If you have a team with uh, one guy scoring all the goals and they stop him, the story is finished. We score from everywhere. With the strikers, with the wingers, with the midfielders, with the fullbacks, with the centre-backs. Only Jack is the only one not scoring. And I want to see football like that. Because then it's much more difficult to stop. Barry, it's 17 goals. What do you make of him? Well, his return's been very good, yeah. Paul. Um, what, one thing you can't label against a big man is his he, he's work ethic. Mm -hmm. he, he works so hard. Sometimes it might sound crazy, but I think sometimes too hard. Um, but look, I, I think he's return, his return, as you just mentioned, there's 17 goals. It's a, it's a brilliant return. I think he's improving. I do think there's a player in there, no, no doubt about it. And you can see the difference since the new managers come in. He, he certainly... He's just mentioned there, he's working hard in the training ground, but I like that attitude. Yep, number nines are in the team to score goals, but also you need your goals spread out. And that's certainly what's happening at Rangers just now. People are are, um, are jumping in with, with, with good, important goals. He's definitely turned it round, Cyril Dessers. He's uh, unrecognisable from the first few months at Rangers. There's a lot of chat all in the season about would they have been as well keeping Cholak? Mm. I think he's better than... I think they've improved on Cholak with, with Dessers. But for the finance involved, for what he cost, his wages, 
I still think Rangers could get better. For, for Rangers to improve, to kick on next season, I, I think they need to upgrade on Dessers. As good as he is, I think, over the course of a season, um, as a second-choice striker, 17 goals so far is great. It is, it is really good. But for them to go to the next, next level, maybe the games, like the Benfica game, I don't think, yeah. I think you can up upgrade on Dessers. Would that yeah. be fair? Yeah, that, I think that's going to be one of their priorities as a, a, a centre forward. There's no doubt about it. I, I think he'll still do. I, I think he'll still be at Rangers. I, I still think he'll be part of the plans. But I think that is one area that the manager will look to strengthen come the summer. What are you thinking on Silva? I know you've been impressed by him, and could the loan become permanent? I, I think it'll be too expensive, Paul. Bear in mind, two years ago, three years ago, he was thirty-five million euros. Crazy. Um, yeah, you know, as in the amount of money I'm not yeah, saying he's not worth yeah, it but, but look he yeah. he's certainly looks comfortable on the left hand side he, he does his his games come on um, certainly in the last month or so um, he's looking apart he scored some important goals um, yeah but I, I, if you're asking me I, I think it could he could be at Rangers next year but another um, another loan period one I'm looking forward to seeing on Sunday Um brought in for the, to impact these types of games the, the big game for Rangers so really f looking forward to seeing how he does handles the occasion Sunday at this time I don't think Rangers Barry was talking about finance involved and maybe release clauses within whatever contracts they signed I'd be more tempted to pay the SEMA money mm -hmm. than the silver money on the evidence of what I've seen so far Barry SEMA yeah but I, I think that could also be out Rangers bracket. I, I'm unsure in terms of what's going to be made available. Listen, it's another story if you win the league poll because you get forty million pound. Um, but look, Sima certainly I wasn't too sure at the start, but he, he became a big player for Rangers, playing in that left hand side where Silver's playing at this moment in time. Popped up with a lot of important goals, and it's good to see him get um, a few minutes in mm -hmm. Saturday because yep. um, he's certainly been missed. And, that, and at this stage in the season, Paul, you want to get important players back fit and ready to play Campbell's on 0808 08, 08, 17, 17 700 sent a message saying Barry is it too early to ask what's your team for Sunday we heard from Stephen he's uh, given yeah, us his team I'll go but, for my team yeah. just now yep I'll have Butlin and goals I'll have Tavernier Goldston Suter and Ridvan if he's fit and available you think he will be? Yep. yes I do um, I'll have a midfield three of Lundstrom Diomonde and Cantwell I'll go for Dijon Sterling on the right hand side, Fabio Silver on the left hand side, and Cyril Dessers through in the middle. What do you think of that one, Stephen? Yeah, I would probably, just because of the way Silver wants to come to the ball, Dessers come, wants to come to the ball, I would probably go with more of a Matondo. Um, I know Seema's been back training. I, I would probably prefer Rangers to have the pace in the front line. Um, I think Celtic. The, the battle with Greg Taylor versus a Sterling or whatever, I think he'd be more more uncomfortable for a winger out and out winger with pace Barry what do you think about that but what's Stephen saying yeah, that, yeah look that's only my opinion yeah. look, it, it could change because you, you could put a Matond in there Seema might have a real good week mm -hmm. at training yeah. um, and he could go and play on the left and Fabio Silva can go over and play on the right um, so the good thing is Paul both teams have got options now mm -hmm. Because there's that important players come back, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see. That that's the way I think Rangers will start. But as I said, I could be totally wrong. After the game at the weekend, three-one win for Rangers. The manager Philippe Clement says um, confident that we could beat anyone. I'm confident we we can win against everybody. Are we at our best now? No, we had all the injuries, and and some players are not yet there at their best shape. But I also know that we can win that game. That we have the quality to do that. And it's also not the decisive ending game of the season. We still have eight games to go. So I'm focused on the next one again. And after it's going to be on the next one again. And that's the mentality of my players. And they understand that's the way. And we're only focused on one thing. And that's performance. If they perform well, then we have a big chance to get a result. And sometimes it doesn't fall your way. Like we had against Motherwell. That can happen also. Although the performance was there. And we will keep on pushing uh, until the end in all these eight games and in the, hopefully also two, uh, two games in the Cup. Barry, anything surprise you there in what he's saying? No, that, that, that's been his attitude mm. since he's, he's come in through the door as, uh, as manager. You can't look too far in front of you, Paul. You've got to just take what's, 
Coming in front of you and at this moment in time, it's about getting a right good preparation this week for the, the big game on Sunday. What do you think of Diamondi? That was Campbell's uh, second question. I like him. And what do you like about him? I just like he, he, just everything about him. I think he can handle the ball. I think he can get about the pitch. He's athletic. He looks to me he's got a really good attitude, which is important as well. And I think he's took to being at Rangers um, very well since he's come through the door. And um, he is one of the ones that the, the Rangers model is, going and buying players for a certain amount of money, making them better and obviously offloading them to, to, to make a bit of money. And I think he's one of the players that certainly, if you're talking about three and a half million pound, he's got the potential to be three times that. Stephen, that would be good business and, and the kind of model that Rangers now want to implement. Yeah, definitely. I mean... Um... It was all that chat about not selling Morelos and, and Kent. All of, a, all of a sudden, Rangers are looking like they've got assets, they've got good players at a good age. Diomande, just got a good feeling about him and he, he signed him right away. You could tell he, he improved Rangers right away. I know he, he's not a huge goal scorer for midfield, but right away came in and scored a couple of goals in his first couple of games and improved the midfield. Um, he brought a real athleticism to it. He's not perfect on, on the ball yet in terms of probably ready to go to the, the, the top level. But you can see there's a lot of potential there and a sellable asset. Quite a few people on saying, what about James Tavernier, the captain of Rangers? Rangers, since the start of season 2015-16, have scored 1,028 goals. Scoring or assisting in 250 of them, almost a quarter, James Tavernier. See Bill lecky has got that in the sun this morning. That's phenomenal, Barry. Two hundred yeah, crazy numbers. Just over a thousand. Wow. Crazy numbers. That that's from a defender. Yeah. Um and as I said, Paul, I have know that people say that I've stuck up for him too much. I I don't believe it. I just look at what he's brought to the mm. Rangers team. Certainly, uh, in an offensive way, it has been frightening the numbers you've just mentioned there. Been part of two hundred and fifty goals since when's that? Beginning of 2015, so that's eight years, just over eight years. Isn't that phenomenal? Pretty decent for yeah. a defender. He, he, yeah. He's got an amazing, I mean it's amazing stats, but he's an amazing record. He always, touch wood, he, he's fit. always fit. Mm -hmm. You think the amount of games probably since 2015 that Rangers have mm -hmm. played, the amount of times he'll have started and played 90, 95 minutes. It's, he's not exactly someone that plays all the games, comes off at 60 minutes. He, he's played... Nearly every game. I can I can hardly remember him having an injury since he came to Rangers. For sure. Yeah, and he's never had to when he's went through some yeah. dark mm -hmm. times or tough times. He, he's always put himself out there, Paul, and I respect mm -hmm. people like that because listen, nobody likes criticism. It's it's uh, sometimes tough to take, but one thing about Tavernier is he's never had. Have we got two great captains at the moment here in Glasgow, Barry, with uh, James Tavernier and Callum McGregor? because I know McGregor has been injured recently, but normally he's always there for Celtic, for Scotland. So two great captains, would you say? Is that how people look back on the two of them, Tavernier and McGregor? Yeah, I mean, in terms of Rangers, the only, only question mark against Tavernier is the amount of trophies. Yeah. Um, but he's got one under his mm. wing this year. Mm. There's a real possibility they can get two and the amount of trophies that, that Callum McGregor's um, amassed over the last uh, number of years since he's took over for Scott Brown um, is, is huge. Uh, and he, he's a big player, Paul, there's, there's no doubt about that. Two of them are, are big players and two of them will be really important um, come uh, Sunday. Sunday. Well, he's, he's, James Tavernier's got to be thinking he's nine, nine games away from being a treble winning captain. Yeah. And up here, I mean, guys like Barry, treble winning, mm -hmm. Callum McGregor, Scott Brown... Um, I think it'll be a real big thing for his legacy if he can if he can go as a Rangers treble winning captain. How do you feel at the end of a season, Barry, and you wake up eventually after the celebrations and you think, what? We've won a treble. Seriously, what what was that like? Uh, hung over. <laughs> <laughs> were you in were you in the hospital at the time or back home? Like yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, what what's it like? Is there a moment when you go? No, oh, yeah, yeah, but to be yeah. fair, that look, whatever level I, I don't care if it's Premier League, yeah. Championship, League One or whatever, listen, it's it's very demanding. Mm. Well, not just physically but mentally as well. It takes a lot out of you. Mm. Um but waking up sometimes you've got to pinch yourself. Because yeah. yeah, it's the hardest thing to do is win a treble pole. So so difficult. Stephen? Yeah, you just think all the cup games where one sending off, one 
huge mistake and then that's the treble gone you don't get another chance at it so yeah amazing amazing achievement if you can get that one over the line are you saying do you think that Rangers will get a treble and you know what my next question will be then if you say no well what's your answer on that one a treble what do you think it's, I know it sounds stupid but I think I think whoever wins the league wins the Scottish Cup Okay. I think it's so close in the league I think if they can psychologically go over that line to, I think they'll play against each other in the Scottish Cup final mm. I think I think the winner of the league wins the, wow. wins the Scottish the Cup the momentum yeah, yeah just everything mm. because I think it will go tight I think it will go to the Lions psychologically if you can win that and you go next week and you get the treble or a double in Celtic's case Ross was on earlier I'm not sure whether he said they're bang at it or bang average with the big two I don't know if you picked up on that in the first hour do you think they're both bang at it or both bang average or is one better than the other just now I honestly don't I, I, I thought I thought weeks ago um, I do I can see why Rangers are favourites mm-hmm. going into Sunday um, I thought Rangers would win at Ibrox and Celtic would win at Celtic Park mm-hmm. but as now we're here in the game I just think Probably heavily influenced by what Man City Arsenal was yesterday. It just it's it's such a big game, but it's not the last game against each other. I think if we don't see a goal in the first fifteen twenty minutes, it could very much look like the Man City Arsenal game. Wow, let's hope it's not that kind of game. But I think Celtic fans would probably take the result. Barry, you're with us throughout the week, so I'm not going to ask your prediction just yet. But you know, you're close to it there with Rangers. You're uh, the outstanding Rangers player of the last twenty thirty years. So, what do you think? You've got one trophy there. Are they getting it ready? Another one for the title, for the championship to be you, there? You the can't think ahead, Paul, because it's dangerous. You've got to be wary of what you're up against. Mm. And you're up against a dangerous team in my still, Celtic. Um, if this was the case, I mean, if you're, you're talking five or six months ago, I would never have yeah. thought Rangers would be in this position. Never have thought. After that Aberdeen game, I spoke about it a number of times, Paul. I sat there and I watched it and thought, you're in trouble here. I'm in trouble. Um, but fair play, not just the manager, but the group of players. Obviously, the manager's been a, a massive influence on them, but they've managed to turn it around. They've got themselves in a brilliant position, but you can't get too carried away. I'm always big on respect, and you've got to be respectful. Have Celtic been great this year? I don't think they have been, but you've still got to be wary of how they've got quality players that can hurt you still the Rangers board saved their season they didn't the timing of um, sacking Michael Beal with, with how much they backed him in the summer they, they went and got him um, while Giovanni Van Brockhorst was still manager yeah. they, he, probably no secret that he was a man they thought he was going to get Rangers back playing a really good style of football and winning football heavily backed him in the summer but they could easily have been a bit more stubborn gave him a bit more time said, but they didn't they, they acted very quickly after the Aberdeen game and said no no more if we leave this any longer then there's absolutely no title race and it's, it's put Rangers back within well it's in it's in their hands to win the league Celtic have stumbled against the Comarnocks we know we know the story but against Rangers in the two games they've had the win and Brendan Rodgers record against Rangers is phenomenal I think he's only lost once isn't it when uh, was it Stephen Gerrard's day is there a moment you think Rangers will think mm, is there a psychological problem against Brendan Rodgers Celtic I think I know what no, you're they, going to say. they can't think like that if you start thinking like that you're beat Paul mm. so I would imagine this manager I will not let any thoughts mm. like that be around uh, the, the training ground this week um, you've got to go in believing but also you've got I'm, I'm always go back to the word you've got to go always into the games respectful as well mm. Um, and I think if you're like that you've got a better chance of being successful and I think this manager is when you listen yeah. to him speak mm-hmm. previously about Celtic he is he knows that they've got a good manager he knows that they've got good players um, but this Rangers team are a different machine at this moment in time um, there's still a bit of improvement to do but the difference in them in this short period of time st- when I've watched the vast majority of the games is look they've not been great in probably half of them but look, they find a way, and that's important. If you want to be successful, you can't play well every single game. It's impossible to do that. But when you don't play well, you have to find a way to win. Stephen, do you think the Celtic board thought they've beaten Rangers twice? That's going to be enough to do it again. They can do it, and maybe they didn't invest the way they should have come January, and then things went wrong. I think, I mean, if Celtic, we, we don't know what's yet to happen. Rangers could win the. Mm-hmm 
both derbies left to go and, and, it, and it won't come down to but if Celtic are to lose this league with throwing points away at home to Motherwells and St Johnson losing to Hearts home and away um, they, they, they really kick themselves I, I think um, Celtic over the course of the season they, I mean Rangers they could have left Rangers for dead they let them back into it and in January probably could have done more to make sure results like the Hearts one a few weeks ago didn't happen the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Just looking at the weekend and looking forward to next weekend. How was the chicken chori thaw? Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. Two plates at Paul. Oh, magnificent. Yeah. Two brilliant. Plates. Stephen, you tonight, quiet night for you after winning the title. Yeah, you'll be straight home tonight or. Or yeah, no, yeah, straight yeah. home for dinner. Yeah, hopefully sleep it off and ready to go again tomorrow. <laughs> what about the weekend? Then we've spoken about Rangers and about Celtic. What about the other games? What about the word from Motherwell? So your old team, St Mirren at Motherwell, your brother playing, of course, the heart of the defence. So one-one. What did you make of it? Yeah, well, I think um, Stuart Kettlewell after the game spoke about they'd spoken all week about trying not to go behind to St Mirren because they're such a difficult team to play against, especially when you're you're losing to them. Um, but I think. Probably a frustrating couple of weeks from St Mern in terms of being 2 0 up, having that great chance from Mikael Mandron to make it 3 0. Yeah. Losing, it was a mental 10 minutes they had. Um, and then Motherwell, you think, but going for Europe um, on the same day, Commander could at Hearts. I think it's a good day to try and make up a couple of points on them. So, in terms of that race for Europe, it was a good weekend for Commander. It sure was. What about on that? Match Barry Motherwell St Mirren Marcus Fraser good header 18 minutes 1 0 for them and then Theo Baird with a, yep. a weak equaliser mm. somebody that couldn't score last year when he was up yep. at St Johnson mm. and, and he's impressed me yep. when I've, I've, I've seen Motherwell um, big physical presence but he, he, he's decent hold up's pretty good and he's been a good find for Motherwell this year Stephen O'Donnell with the assist, so uh, did his career no harm being on the show just over a week ago. Um, 1 1. What was the feeling about 1 1? Happy enough? Or are well, you never happy to drop points at home? But Yeah, well, I think Motherwell had needed to win if they had any aspirations yeah. of getting into the top six. Um, but it's just, it's, it's been the way for Motherwell this season. Far too many times they've left themselves too much to do, conceded that first goal. And even with the Theo Bear goals, I mean, he's been amazing. A lot of the talk was how would they cope without Van Veen, but Theo Bear, I mean, the age of him, the potential he's got, we speak about sellable assets, um, what an asset he is, but it's just far too many times this season they've gone behind. What are you thinking about Derek McInnes, Kilmarnock 1 1 against Hearts? What did you feel? It's Marley Watkins well, scoring. They've secured yeah. the top six place, Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's no surprise that they went to think I and come away with a point. He's got a good team there, uh, Derek. Recruitment, very good in the summer. Also in, in January, made a couple of good signings. You look at it, he's got, he's got a good start in 11, but when you look at his bench as well, if it's not going according to plan, he's got guys who can come on and, and change a game. Um, and listen, they've thoroughly, uh, thoroughly deserved to cement that top six place. And see when you see his old club Aberdeen on 33 points, and that's after a win at the weekend, and Kilmarnock on 45. The difference in the budgets and the scale of the clubs, Barry, it's, uh, it's hard to believe. Yeah, and it just shows you that uh, how good a job he, he did at Aberdeen, Paul, because they've struggled to replace him. They've had four managers in um, that they've had to obviously get rid of. And uh, we've mentioned quite a few times in the show, they need to get this one spot on. They're probably third highest budget alongside Hearts. Um, yeah, there's a, and, and I'll go back to it. I thought they were harsh and getting rid of Barry Robson yeah. in January. I thought he deserved a, a, at least to the end of the season because I think they would have been in a better position they are in now. But listen, they made the decision and um, brought an experienced manager in. Clearly didn't work. Um, and I honestly don't know what way they're going to go. I, I thought they were going to bring a manager in before the... Yeah. The weekend's game against Ross County, yep, they get three points, but... I think that's part of the problem, I don't think they know what... Yep, I do. said that last They week. can't get who they wanted. I, I think I think if they'd kept Barry Robson, or if they'd mm-hmm. kept Peter Leaven and caretaker charge, um, they'd be challenging for the top six. Um, the Neil Warnock appointment was just, I don't know, for PR or for attention, I don't know what it was, but it, it totally derailed their season.
I think a lot of people want Derek, wanted Derek back, but you know at Kilmarnock he's doing such a brilliant job. And I, I don't see back, why he would he? leave Kilmarnock. Yeah. He's he's yeah. really settled there. He's building a good squad. They're, they're a club, I think. They've got good owners. Oh, yeah. um, he's got obviously clearly got a really good relationship with him. Plus, there's a new training ground around yeah, the corner yeah. as well. So, yep. I think Derek's more than happy to stay there and I think he's building something special at Kilmarnock. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think there's any way he'd leave Kilmarnock. You think of what he he built at Aberdeen with Stuart Milne, the brilliant relationship with Stuart Milne. He let him just crack on with the football. Being at Kilmarnock, honestly, Billy Bowie has got more interest in fixing something around the stadium mm-hmm. than what Derek McInnes' team is. As long as everything's going well in the pitch, he, he doesn't get involved. Him and Phyllis McLeish are brilliant owners and allows Derek just to totally run the football department and they're reaping the rewards they're not trying to um, get involved and I don't think there's any way he'd give that up to, to deal with Dave Cormack again it's Derby week let's go on the lines Kevin is on good evening Kevin how you doing boys yeah good Kevin. yep um, Stephen is improving by the every half Barry how's he looking at I think he's got colour back in the face hasn't he yeah. he just needs a good sleep <laughs> <laughs> that's what he needs but listen that's what it's all about, Paul. Yeah. Um, league titles are hard to come by, and he's he's obviously he's enjoyed the weekend. I'm sure he should have. Kevin, there's Barry Ferguson telling you league titles are hard to come by. Oh, well, he would know that. Unfortunately, the past 10, 12 years or so, Barry, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, Sorry, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Dave. Listen, <laughs> come back on the blower in eight weeks, <laughs> and I'm sure you will, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Win, lose, or draw. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go back on probably licking my wounds by knowing my luck I thought they just obviously they were playing the big ones this weekend but I thought they um, yesterday uh, second half especially I thought we, we were really impressive I know you technically know up against much against Livingston who are struggling but away on that pitch it's, Celtic and Brendan Rodgers actually don't really have a brilliant record against Livingston away so it was a, it was a, it was a good, uh, it was a good result. Some really good performances in there, and I'm um, obviously looking forward to um, to this weekend. Um, I'm intrigued with what the starting lineups going to be. I've been debating it with some mates what the midfield's going to look like. Uh, but I think Brendan Rodgers has got a massive headache on his hands because uh, Tomoki Awata has came in, mm-hmm. and he's been solid eight out of ten every single game. Same again yesterday. Does it? He's kind of kind of reminds me a tiny wee bit he, like Neil Lennon. He does all the dirty work. Goes completely sometimes goes unnoticed, mm-hmm. but he does all the dirty work, all the stuff that needs to be done. Which when you break the game down, it's just so important. And I think with McGregor coming back, obviously McGregor. I think even if McGregor's ninety percent, eighty percent fit, you'll probably start. Mm-hmm. Um, it was interesting to see who's mm-hmm. going to be in there, but. I'm tempted to see Awata should be in there. Wait, wait I think I, Kevin, what do you there. think it's going to be? Who's the midfield three? I think Barry, Barry, I think it's going to be McGregor. I think it's going to be O'Reilly. And I think it's going to be... Um, Hattati. Hattati. That's what I think. That's what Awata. I think it's going to be. Well, Awata, I think it's going to be. I, I don't think Hattati will make it in. Wow. Stephen, you were saying four in the midfield. Kevin, did you hear that in the first hour? Stephen, what's your midfield? Yeah, well, I just, I thought, I mean, the, what the game I'm expecting, yeah. um, how physical it will be, what Ibrooks will be like. Away from home. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was I was going to bring in Callum McGregor for Nicholas Coon, maybe push Hattati or Matt Riley, just, just off the right, not as a right winger, but mm-hmm. maybe playing kind of right in midfield and playing a lopsided team because I don't think, well, I, I didn't expect Ridvan to, to make it until... Yeah, meeting Barry tonight yeah. um, I thought maybe Sterling or Barisic would play and it wouldn't be as much a concern for an attacking full back but I just thought it would be, be a bit more solid and as you say Awata is great at the dirty stuff and I think he's a good foil for Callum McGregor but I just within that Hitati and O'Reilly both have to play Kevin? That's a good, that's a good point I think Hitati um, I just thought maybe fitness wise if anything but then again when I think back to yesterday I thought he was outstanding um, just the forward passing he's, uh, he, he brung yesterday I don't know if Barry or Stephen will agree I've been watching the games Paul you as well but Celtic since he's been, he's been out they've missed that kind of cutting edge pass in the final third that person is willing to take a chance playing the, playing the 
playing the incisive passes and he was back to doing that straight away yesterday. So, I, do, I, I think it's going to be very tough. I, I've got no idea what it's going to be. That's just too, <laughs> personally, I would play. But I've been known to be wrong in the past. But I just think, I, I just think Awata brings that sword with this. Um, and that midfield, as Steve, Steve says there, is a, is a great foil for McGregor. So I just felt that he had to be in there. I actually feel very sorry for Bernardo because mm-hmm. I don't think in anybody's mind he'll get in. But he's actually been he was really good. He was really good when he came on yesterday as well. So I feel sorry for him, but kind of spoiled for choices sure. a bit. And in the midfield, there's going to be an, an interesting game. Of course, the subs are so important these days. Stephen, you're going to jump in there. No, I was just I was agreeing with. Um, I think Brendan Rodgers had a bit of stick this season about Celtic playing slow, but you mm-hmm. can see the difference. Um, Kevin said it. Real Hattati's just always looking for the forward passes. They're just, they do play quicker. Um, so always get space, Steve, man. You know yeah, what's that? Yeah, and I think, I think Barry, Barry, you really appreciate that. He's always, he's always got space. He's always seems to find five yards of space. I don't know how he does it. Yeah, he's, he's a quality operator. Look, I, I just think if he, if he's fit and he comes through another week's training, you can't leave Hattati out the, the Celtic midfield, in my opinion. And if Callum McGregor declares himself fit and everybody's fit as we spoke about earlier on the show the Celtic midfield I think their strongest three is McGregor, Hitati and O'Reilly Kevin what worries you about Rangers then? Looking at their team who are the players that you would be thinking about thinking you have to try and negate them and that's hard away from home I don't worry about Rangers I worry about I've always worried about the overall fixture if that makes sense just the occasion of, I, I worry about but I think Rangers overall Listen, I'm a level-headed person. Rangers, are, Rangers have been really good this season. They've, been, they've, they've not played really good. Th- I think before Christmas Rangers and Celtic were both poor. But I think that if there was any worry about Rangers, it's probably that um, they, they've got the consistency. I, I think um, I think their deliveries into the box um, is, a, is, a, is a wee bit of a worry. You always worry about Tavernier. You always worry about getting three kicks anywhere from 25 yards out. You always kind of worry about that. Yeah. Um, I think they're a good. They're, listen, they're a, Rangers are a good side, so it's going to be a, a, a really good, uh, a really good game. Um, I think we, I think we both teams, Celtic won't. We won't keep a clean sheet, right? One hundred percent. We will not keep a clean sheet. But I think there's going to be plenty. I think there could be plenty of goals in this game because I think defensively, both teams are yeah. great. Uh, defensively, I think they can both be good. Goal, but I think we've got Carter Vickers back at the right time. We've got Hatati back. We're getting McGregor back. So it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Um, it's going to be a, a really good game. Wouldn't be surprised if it was something like two each. I would love a win. I think a draw is a great result for us. Uh, maybe not as much for Rangers, but because it's going to be so close. Um, but I would worry about the the, the, the wide areas of Rangers would probably worry me. The, the deliveries into the box. Um, aye, that would worry me probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the atmosphere for me. It's the some of Rangers' best and biggest performances in the last few years have been in Europe, um, and at the Ibrox crowd getting them involved. And I thought I thought it was one of the big successes for Celtic in the previous game at Ibrox. They almost it was fifty thousand frustrated Rangers fans because Celtic slowed the game down, scored at a good time, and I thought they really got in the back. But some of Rangers' best performances in the last few years have been um, with the crowd being really involved and. They play at the top of the game, really aggressive style of football. So I think that's that's the biggest threat for, for Celtic, in, in my opinion, for Sunday. Barry, would you agree with Kevin? He thinks Celtic will score. That means Rangers yeah, will have I to... I think there's going to be goals in it, yeah. Paul. Mm. I, I do think both teams are going to go for it. I really do. Um, and I think who wins it has got a real foothold in the title. So that's why I see two teams going right at it. Very attack-minded. And I think there's going to be goals. Alex has been on saying who's going to referee it we don't know yet I think tomorrow Barry if you were choosing who do you think is the best choice to referee it because yeah, there's been so much chat in time I think Nick Walsh is the best referee okay. yep. well I don't say that <laughs> why? I don't like yeah. Nick Walsh no, no just for Celtic I've watched games where him playing with Rangers uh, I've watched games where it's no the old firm playing at all and Nick Walsh has been in charge I just think he's I, I think he's weak I think some of his decision making mm-hmm. is I think some of his decision making sometimes is baffling, and that's for Celtic Rangers and other teams. I don't, I don't think he's up there with the best at all. Really? Kevin, is there a referee that Barry could have said that you might have been okay with? 
You're Dallas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a well, difficult question, maybe, isn't it? Maybe his boy. I used to be Macy's boy. I went to school with. I went to school with Andy. Um, yeah. I like. Uh, listen, Willie Collins got plenty of experience in the big occasion. Yeah. But uh, so he does. I know he gets stick at both sets of fans, but mm. he's got plenty of experience, and I don't yeah. think the occasion does to get to him whatsoever. Kevin, we, yeah, okay, that is a tough question. I mean, Nick Walsh, most when people say one wins? of the best. I think it'll be tomorrow, would it not be? It'd have to be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Countdown's on, so... Whoever it is, people are not going to be happy, are they? No, exactly. And there's been so much attention, you know, on Don Robertson, on The, the announcement Jason, feels like a partnership now, as opposed yeah. to actually the oh, referee. Uh, it's almost who's like, who's the referee and who's yeah. the bar? You never hear the fourth official mentioned anymore. Kevin, we need to take a break. <laughs> Thank you. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team. Recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. April Fool's Day, but uh, nothing happened in here, I don't think, April Fool's wise. We've got Barry, we've got Stephen with us, and we're looking at the games coming up this coming weekend. And looking back at the weekend there, we're at the top of the table. No real change. Celtic winning yesterday, Rangers the day before, Hearts draw at the weekend, um, 56 points, Kelly on 45, we're going through some of the other games, what a season it's been for Kelly, Livy, they're away, Barry, aren't they, there's uh, virtually no chance they can stay up. Yeah, I mean, you don't like saying it that early, but Paul, yeah, they're, they're, they're struggling, you can see they're very, very low uh, in confidence, and I think it's just going to be a, a rebuilding job uh, for next season um, when they, they, they get down into the the championship. I, I think it needs to be a miracle for them to get, get out of this. I see Billy Gilmer's taking a knock. I see, I, I seen yeah. it in the tackle when, into yeah. the challenge um, against Northern Ireland. The boy was running up the line and he flew in and I thought straight away, I was like, he's hurt himself there. And you could see him obviously limp about, obviously got took off and um, I seen he's in a, a knee breast. So, Hopefully it's short term and not long term because obviously we've got the the Euros coming up, Paul, and we want yep. everybody fit and available for uh, these two games before we go, go off to Germany. I know it was a friendly, but it did look a bit, it did look a sore one. Stephen, we hope that Billy, who's really finding form and you know he's getting a run at Brighton, is making a difference. Yeah, especially when you've already got the worry over Callum McGregor's yeah. fitness. Mm. Uh, it'd be a massive blow not to have them going into the Euros and. It, you question, I mean, the, the friendlies um, this calendar year haven't worked out well, having the England and France away in between Spain away as a qualifier and the Holland away and then what the Ireland game turned out to be a really physical game and we obviously lose a couple of players, Andy Robertson also to injury, so um, the, the friendlies didn't really work out well for us this year. Barry, are they both going to be at full strength this weekend? Some people are asking here for Rangers against Celtic. It's looking pretty much like it, isn't it? Yeah, it, it looks like that. You just need. I, I think the two players that, for a, for a Rangers point of yep. view, it's Ridvan. Is he going mm -hmm. to be available? And obviously Celtic is their, their captain is Callum McGregor. Mm -hmm. um, I would be surprised if both aren't in the starting elevens uh, come Sunday. And you look, you don't want any excuses. You want both teams to mm -hmm. uh, have strong squads and everybody fit and available. Um, but we just need to wait till we get deeper into the week, Paul, to see uh, whether these players that I've just mentioned and, and maybe other players who have maybe get niggles for the weekend. Mm -hmm. you, you just don't know, but hopefully both teams are at full strength and we have an absolute cracker. Dave's on the line from Thurzo. Hi, Dave. Evening, Paul. How are you? Yeah, we're all pretty good. Happy Easter to you. Hopefully you've enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah. Are you looking forward to this coming weekend already? Absolutely. As soon as, as, soon as the last game before it, the over, Paul, that's when the twitching and the nervousness starts. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's in your mind tonight about the game? Uh, just listening to what Barry was saying. I mean, as you well know, I'm a Celtic supporter, but I've got huge respect for Barry, what he achieved as a player. And uh, I like him as a pundit. I think he speaks a lot of sense. And uh, I totally agree with what he says. If, if Carl Max fit, him and Atati have got to play. Um, I know a has done a fairly decent job when atati has been out, but you saw on Sunday what a difference in performance it was with Hattati and Cameron and Carter Vickers back. Yeah. Class player, Hattati, you mentioned that, Barry, he is, you can see it's, it's another level, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I think during the international break, they had a bounce game and he played in that. So he's been back, um, obviously training. He said that, I 
I think it was 45 minutes mm. in a bounce game <clears throat> and you could see the, the, the difference I thought as the game went on it got stronger and stronger mm. and that's natural when you've, you've missed a number of months Paul you're not at your sharpest but it, it does make a difference to the Celtic team it's, it's clear to yeah, see yeah. and I mean I, I think he's been one of the players that has been a brilliant signing for Celtic and one that when he's fully fit and he's at it I think Celtic will struggle to hold on to him I think there'll be a lot of teams keep my eye on a player like Hattati you know, his last start before yesterday was the Atletico Madrid game yep. in October. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, yep. such that's over six months ago. And maybe that's been part of the story of the season. Rangers got better, better and better. Yeah, but sometimes you have seasons like that where yeah. you, you get injuries. It's just been yeah. one of these seasons for him. But when he's back fit and ready to go, he's, he's got to be in the starting 11. If he's not in the starting 11 on Sunday when the teams come through, as a Rangers, if I was a Rangers player or a Rangers fan sitting in the stand, I'd be rubbing my hands. He's a he's a quality player. You just worry for Hatati that but I mean it's he has been injury plagued yeah. this season. It's been really for such a young player. I don't know if he, he came into football late. Professionally he's only been playing a few years. I don't know if that impacts you in terms of because we, we all know playing for Celtic, playing for Rangers, it's absolutely relentless in terms of the games, midweek games and it's a, it's actually a scary thought in terms of that last start in October. You think of how key a player he is, and as I said earlier, Celtic play quicker when he's in the team. He's one of those guys that sees passes. He's a clever player, and to not have him for such long spells, and you can see sometimes why um, they've had some of the results because the drop off from Hatate to even a Bernardo is big. But yeah. that, that that tells me we were playing yesterday at Livingston. Certainly on that surface, that he's a hundred percent fit and ready to go. You wouldn't take any chances. So that t- and yeah. same with Carter Vickers as well. Because they're two big players for Celtic. For them to play yesterday tells me that they, they have no issues whatsoever. He, now. he did look freer. I think he came back in a spell early in the season. He, he took a bit to get mm-hmm. going and he thought he wasn't overly happy, but he looked as if he enjoyed the game yesterday. And I thought he moved, I thought it might have taken him a few games to get up to speed, but I thought he looked mm-hmm. like he enjoyed the game. I remember, start of the season, it was uh, David Turnbull who was preferred to Hattati, wasn't it? And of course, uh, he's, he's now gone. Dave, what else are you thinking up front? Is there any doubt? Is it going to be Kyogo? Some people are saying maybe Ida. What would you do? Kyogo. Yeah. Every time Kyogo is fit. Yeah. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, I think, I mean, if Hattati had a bit of luck yesterday, could have scored a hat trick. Mm-hmm. Um, just a, a bit of luck. Maybe the ball's not bouncing quite right or getting, you know, come back down quick enough. But, uh, yeah, if, if, if Hattati and Carl Mark are fit, then I'm sorry mm-hmm. a lot, but you're no playing. And what about the battle between the managers? Because Brendan Rodgers coming with his Celtic team up against Philippe Clement, who has had a you know a brilliant start to his career in Glasgow at Rangers. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job with Rangers the way he's turned them around. You can't deny that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be interesting because I believe Brendan's never lost a Rangers manager yet, so it could be another fe- feather in Clement's cap. He's uh, he's certainly doing a good job for them. You can't deny that. He's just lost one game against Rangers, hasn't he? You know, the last time round. What's your scoreline? I know it's a bit early, six days to go, but or five and a half now. What do you think? I think if if, if, if we start with the same eleven as we did yesterday, then we're getting at least a draw. If Carl Mark's fit and mm. start on for the start, we're winning the game. Uh, but it'll be close. So two one, maybe three one at a push. But uh, we'll get at least a draw if Carl Mark doesn't make the start in eleven. I think he will start. Thanks, Dave. Calling in from Thurzo. There's going to be goals in it. Barry, you'll be with us in the countdown till the game itself. Stephen, what's your uh, scoreline then? Because we're not going to see you until next week or hear you. No, um, I've, I, I'm probably a bit like Dave. I think if Celtic can have McGregor fully fit, Hattati, I think they can get out there with a 1 1 draw. Um, I think psychologically, I think Rangers need to win the game. Um, to win the title they're going to have to beat Celtic and I don't think they'll ever get a better chance on Sunday Who's got the momentum? Are they both now? They both have momentum? It doesn't have to be one or the other um, Momentum they, they win both of them win most most weeks Momentum I would say momentum slightly with Philippe Clement in terms of the job he's done um, and I can see why they're starting favourites for the game really impressive job he's done since he came in and I do think to win the league I don't think I think they're going to have to beat Celtic and win the last two games Barry it's going to be some game isn't it yeah, momentum yeah. goes out the window Paul mm-hmm. my yeah. friend 
it's who turns up yep. and who um, mentally can handle the, the occasion. Um, and it, look, it's going to be interesting to see what both lineups are, what the managers go, what way they go away. In terms of Rangers, do they go with Sterling in the wide area or do they bring in a natural winger? Is uh, Callum McGregor going to come back into the Celtic team? So, yep, it's um, it's a game that I'm really looking forward to. Two teams with good wins under the belt this weekend and all they want is a, a good week of prep before uh, 12 o'clock next Sunday because it will be, um, it'll be feisty. It's not going to be a snooze fest like it was I don't yesterday. Think it is. I City, think it is. Yeah, I honestly believe that two teams are going to go for it. They know, look, you're, you're eight games to go. Eight games to go. I know Celtic have got one less because, yeah. Celtic, uh, sorry, yeah. Rangers have got the game against Dundee midweek. But I think whoever wins it gains that bit of advantage. Stephen, early night for you. Congratulations again. Thanks, Paul. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Cheers, Paul. Big John's here tomorrow night alongside Craig Moore. We're here at five. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.